for a week till we leave. So you excited to be fighting in Montreal? Oh yeah, it's my first time to Canada, period. You know, so um, yeah, I'm excited, man. And the fans in Montreal, you know, from the fights, from the Pascal fights I've seen, but them fighting B-Hop, um, uh, Boutte and them guys, you know, um, man, you see the fan, the fan base is crazy for boxing there. So yeah, I'm excited to go, no doubt. Also your first time on HBO. Yeah, yeah, 14 years in the making. I mean, you know, uh, but happy to be there or be able to get there. Now it's time to perform there, you know? Your opponent, um, you know, he had to serve glass ball. Yeah. He, he has up and down days. Right. Don't we all? <laughs> right? Um, you talk to the up and down, I guess, king. <laughs> you know, it's an eliminator. Uh, I'm sorry, say what? Oh, no, we good. <laughs> um, the stakes of the fight, among other things, it's, it's an eliminator, so it's yeah. a, yeah, it puts you right where you want to be. Yeah. What, what's that feel like? I mean, the, stake, the stakes of the fight are the ultimate stakes, you know? Um, this is to get to the heavyweight title, you know? This is that fight that'll get you there. Um, so it's like every, every fight I've had, from 1 and 0, 2 and 0, 6, 7 and 0, has been that next, that fight has been the most important fight in my career. But this fight being on the stage, the heavyweight, you know, number one spot to get to the champion, this is the biggest fight of my career. This is the biggest fight of a lot of people's career, you know, so um, I, I, wanna, I wanna capitalize on it. I wanna make it, you know, make the best of it, get in there and do what I, supposed to do, you know, 100%, getting in and do what I, I know I can do, but, um, and not be so much concerned about glass golf himself, but just focusing on me more, you know, but the stakes are, ooh, this is the upper echelon of stakes, you know. Just, just the, the fun of it, you win this fight, you get the, you're the number one shot, so the IBF champ is either going to be Klitschko, who you have yeah. history with, Brian Jennings, who's a city guy, yeah. and, or, Klitschko's talking about Tyson Fury. Should he pull yeah. up an upset match and a rematch for the title? Yeah. It's all, it's so, yeah, all so, smiles. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah. I mean, I just gotta, I gotta get here and handle this business, you know, and uh, then I guess I can elaborate on that uh, March 15th. <laughs> but, you know, right now, yeah, um, Glasgow is, is, he's at the tip of the spear, man. I'm, I'm looking to chuck that thing and go in. Question oh. for both. Oh. Let me question for both you and Nazim. Uh, most of your fights have been title fights. And Tuesdays, or, always Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> most of your fights have always been uh, have been title fights and or eliminators. Yeah. And uh, championship big fight experience. I'll ask Nazim first. How much does that mean uh, considering Glass Golf is? You know, he had a you know nice fight with Adamic, but other than that, there really hasn't been too many big fights in his uh, resume. I'm gonna tell you like this, last off, I don't underestimate any capacity. And even though fighters say it's not true, my experience has been true. Them kids that have been to the Olympics is ready for the big stage. Mm -hmm. I've been to the Olympics. The Olympics is, is large. And it, it, more people watching you than any world championship. I asked my son who was at the Olympics. We were walking out of aisle one time with Bernard Hopkins, and Bernard had every belt you could have, including the ring belt. And, and everybody's carrying them, holding them up. I turned to my son, Rock. I said, how's this compete to the open games at the Olympics? He said, this ain't even close. Mm. He, said, he said, this ain't even close. So when kids have been in the Olympics, that's why I think we get lost. We see they're not ready. When Jermaine Taylor's and them young boys, you think they're not ready for the big stage, but they are. I think Glasgow is ready for it. I mean, I'm not underestimating in any way, shape, or form. I think he's like, if not the most dangerous, he's definitely one of the most open up. Mm -hmm. Definitely one of the most dangerous we ever faced. He's a very, very talented kid. Is there anything you've uh, worked on specifically to uh, fight Glasgow, or is it just, you know, the Steve Cunningham show as usual? Steve has to be the best Steve Cunningham he can be because that's enough for Glasgow. I and mean, if Steve's at his best, 
he brings enough to the table to handle any big man. And like the guy saying, he might come back to, to, to he might come back down the pipe to Tyson Fury. You know? Here's the thing, Steve just turned heavyweight not too long ago. He had his face in his fourth undefeated heavyweight and his third one in a row. I, who's done that, including the champion? Who's been doing that? And he's done something that Lennox Lewis never did face a left-handed heavyweight in the pros. So I felt like had he had more time to get acclimated to this weight class, I think he'd had an even better performance against Fury. A little bit different to be fighting a guy who's in your size range, you know, 220, 6'2", 220, uh, instead of, you know, these 270, 280 pound guys are even uh, messing with the last couple of years? Uh, no, because, I mean, I'm looking at it sort of like a cruiserweight fight, you know, uh, it'll be more closer to that than anything. Um, but I mean, you know, I said we, we get to work, we, we got good sparring, uh, good guys uh, that we worked with before, and, um, Man, you know, we <laughs> we've been putting in work, man, you know, ready for whatever. You know, so he can come in at 250 if he wants, you know, or 210, you know, we're just ready to work. That'd be good if he was 250. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or, uh, you haven't seen any odds on the fight, but I assume this is the underdog. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'm, listen, I've been the underdog since I came to boxing. <laughs> you know, um, I remember my fight in Poland, my first fight in Poland. Um, shoot, even before that, I fought in South Africa, 2004, against the number seven cruiserweight in the world. He just lost his world title um, in a fight, and I was, you know, I guess I was the bounce back fight, you know, and um, I was sparring with Jean-Marc Mormec. You know, and they were like, hey, Cunningham, you want to fight this guy? And I'm like, sure, you know, so um, I, I was the underdog then, uh, won that fight, uh, for Shistov Ladarczyk, you know, from Poland. Uh, it was a funny situation in that first fight, I lost my O, and, but we got, the, uh, we got the media rematch, got back over there, won that fight. I knew I was the underdog then, and media, from there. Excuse me, you know, cutting Immediate rematch. Immediate. Based, based on great management. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> and uh, then my next fight was against the undefeated, I think, 22-year-old Marco oh, Huck. I think you were 7 to 1. Yeah, I was like a 7 to 1 underdog. And uh, the main thing we did was keep the faith. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you believe in what you're doing and, and when you love what you do and when you work hard at what you do, um, Nobody can stop you, you know? Um, that's the way I feel, that's the way I felt. And going over there to fight Huck in Germany on his promoter's show and stopping him in the 12th round, it's unbelievable. I can't, man, I can't even explain to you that feeling, you know, because in, in hearing all of the, uh, I, I read uh, all the websites and I read I was seven to one and all this and that, and it's like, wow, nobody thinks I'm gonna win, you know? Even the American media didn't. And I understood though, because here it is, I'm going to Germany, I'm going to the Lions then, you know? In Germany, we always say they already got one judge in the pocket, already. You know what I'm saying? So you just gotta, and that second one, they may have a second one, you don't know. But fishy things go on in somebody else's home court. But uh, I was, man. So I've always been the underdog, man, always. Is it an advantage to, to be the underdog, you know, as far as motivation, preparation? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, for so, for so long, being an underdog for so long, that motivation is just built in now, you know what I'm saying? So, um, shoot, look at my record. How many times have I fought in Philly? You know, uh, as a cruiserweight, it was only one time. And then, you know, now I fought a few times now as a heavyweight, but, um, as an amateur, I started boxing. I never really had that home court advantage, never, I, even as an amateur. So I, that's the kitchen I, you know, I cook in well, you know, going to somebody else's hometown, 
Um, just not being, I'm used to not being comfortable, you know. Uh, I learned to work in, in uncomfortable situations. Heck, I was in the United States Navy, man, for four years. And overseas, you know, uh, working 16, 17, 18 hours a day <coughs> on a flight deck, you know, so I'm ready for hard work, no doubt. And just that, like, lack, lack of, of comfort. Your service, young man. <laughs> <laughs> lack of comfort and things like this makes you tougher, harder, you know, tougher to beat. Is that, is that what it's about? It, it, it really, lack of comfort, when you, can, when you can perform in lack of comfort, it builds something in you, you know? Um, I know, I, I'm not gonna mention any names, but I, I, I see fighters, and I see how these guys, they're so comfortable at home, you know, or, or close to home, and it's like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that overseas, you know? I've, and I've seen guys go overseas and break, break down mentally, you know, because they're not in a comfortable setting. I could care less about where I fight. You know, we can have a ring on the moon, and, 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 and Steve Cunningham is, is going time, you know?